Hey you guys. So tonight I wanted to talk to you about addiction recovery and how parents can handle setbacks with their adult children. So for those of you that are new here, my name is Sally Harris and I help desperate moms of defiant adult children. I help the moms regain their own life back. If you've walked this road at all, you know how it's full of anxiety, depression, sometimes addiction. It's, it's a lot of craziness um, that's going on in our own head and I believe that we need someone to help us to help calm that path and walk through um, the storm with, with you. And so that's what I do. I will put a discovery call link below in the video and um, I would love to chat with any of you moms that are dealing with this. So there are five ways that I believe you can help with um, setbacks with your adult child is in the recovery process. Now, first of all, I think number one, we have to realize that setbacks are inevitable. But setbacks don't necessarily mean that they're going to use their drug of choice. It just means that um, there's going to be setbacks, whether they're triggered or whatnot, but it's going to cause anxiety. There's going to be issues. It's not like it's going to be a completely super smooth road 100% of the time. And so I think we need to be realistic in that. So being aware of warning signs and triggers, that is a huge one um, under that category because um, if we know setbacks are inevitable, we need to pay attention to what are our triggers. And that is triggers, triggers for the mom and triggers for the adult child. Um, as a mom, I'm sure you have triggers as well. Things that remind you of your son or daughter that can trigger you into getting anxiety, depression, etc. So um, one thing that I always pay close attention to <clears throat> are four things. And the acronym is HALT. You may have heard of it before, but it's hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If, if you're in any type of high risk situation, you need to pay attention to those four things. Because if you're hungry, you're angry, you're lonely, or you're tired, you're gonna be more at risk for um, triggers and for anxiety. So, and more, you know, the, the desire to use basically, because, you know, those four things are pretty basics um, when it comes to our basic needs. Um, again, stress is a major trigger and a major relapse trigger um, because stress takes on our whole body and mind, right? Um, not overnight, but over time, I promise you it does. Um, avoid social situations that involve addictive substances. Now this, we're talking about your child here, but if this is you as a mom too, same thing. Um, for some of you that know, I've been sober for four and a half years and I've walked this road with my daughter for 10 so you can do the math and see that that's where this road kind of took me. Not that it's her fault. That's how I chose to deal with the stress. Um, I'm a firm believer that we can't blame our child or our spouse or anyone else for why we do the things that we do. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. So number two is following the recommended treatment path. So if your child has been in rehab or is seeking counseling, they've got some type of a... Um, of a treatment path, whether it's group counseling, individual counseling, case management, um, whether it's meds, supplements, whatever that they need to do for their specific situation, you want to help encourage them to follow that treatment path. And whatever you can do to help with that, if your child has gone through an addiction and has been able to get out the other side, we need to support them in any way we can. So if that means driving them to meetings, etc., cetera, if, because they're helping themselves, then it's okay to help them. I don't call that enabling. Um, it's when the child's not helping himself or herself and you're give, 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 that's a different story. But in this scenario like this, I think it's really important. Uh, number three is to rely on peer support to deal with setbacks. So this involves major lifestyle changes. So if you're, if you're sober from drugs or alcohol, your lifestyle changes, like it or not. Um, sometimes your friends change, the things that you do changes. Um, and you're going to learn to love the new things and not that you can't do any of the old stuff, but sometimes you have to take a pause. And so you want to help your child realize um, that sometimes there are going to be those setbacks. Um, spending time with other people who have achieved sobriety, they're going to understand where you're coming from. Um, so I think that's important to spend time with those people as well, whether it's um, AA, NA, Celebrate Recovery. And then, of course, for moms, you know, there are those meetings as well. I did actually attend a few Al-Anon meetings a long time ago, many, many years ago. Um, I think it's great for moms and parents. 
Um, what is difficult for me with that is you're able to speak what you're feeling, but you can't get feedback because there's no crosstalk. And I don't know about you, but I like to converse. And that's why I decided to do this for moms because that wasn't enough for me. It's a great outlet and I highly recommend, but it wasn't enough for me. I needed more. And so basically I have decided to help moms do all the things that I needed help with during that tenure process. Okay, number four is prioritize your own health and well-being. I'm going to talk more on this tomorrow, but just to touch on it, um, it's called compassion fatigue. And when you have compassion fatigue for your child, your health can go downhill really, really fast because you're going to start ending up with health issues that you had, you're going to wonder where this come from. Well, over long periods of time, it does happen. And so eating well, sleep, exercise, and things like that are so important. Um, number five, which I love this one, um, is retain hope in the face of uncertainty. So the road to recovery is not easy, but it's doable. And it's a choice, I believe, that um, we have the tools that we need, but it's also a choice. We, our kids and us, we get pulled all over the place. But if we can retain hope in that process, so helping your child um, realize and know that hope is precious. When you're up against the odds of recovery, um, I'm not exactly sure what the odds are as far as number wise, but I know a lot of people um, have to pick up again and try again. So when they lose hope, when your child loses hope, you must retain your own. And that's so hard. That's so hard, but it can be done. Um, but think about it this way. If you weren't healthy to begin with, how do you think you would be able to do that? If you were already over drinking, overeating, not taking care of yourself, and then something like a relapse happens, how are you going to be able to hang on? That's something that we need to think about as moms. So working towards a goal, whether helping your child work towards a goal. So they're, they're already trying to um, obtain you know, the sobriety, keep the sobriety, right? But at the same time, help them focus a little bit around the corner a little bit, like let's talk about um, whether, let's say they were interested in um, getting healthier, exercise, diet, whatever it is that they're interested in, walk alongside them with that. I would walk alongside them, help them create a plan, do it with them if they want you to, um, things like that, helping them find another goal besides just sobriety. Nothing too heavy, obviously, because sobriety enough is a pretty big goal, especially in the beginning. But I think it's important that they can realize because they need to know that they can do hard things. And I think as moms, we forget that we can do hard things too. Um, I know I've, I've told my daughter in the past several years, a couple times, it's like, choose hard. Choose hard for once. I think I learned that in a movie some one time, but it was so good. It's like, you know what? The easy way out is to go do what we've been doing. Choose hard because we're all capable. So we just need the support. Um, and that, that support is crucial. So anyway, if you need that support, um, you can click on the link below and I would love to chat with you about what I do. I hope you have a good evening. Thanks.